this video is to try and help you with electron configuration and orbital diagrams. So to get started, um, there are three rules that govern electron configuration, or in other words, the order that the electrons go into the atom. Uh, the three rules, as far as those go, I normally don't test on their names, but just really about understanding what they mean and how they work. Okay, so um, first of all, you should probably know that the energy levels are not necessarily what you would expect. Yes, they do go in order. First is closest to the nucleus, and then we go all the way out. And on our periodic table, we do have seven energy levels. However, the atom does have more, just to kind of let you know. But what I want you to kind of see here in the picture is that at some point right around here, our energy levels start to stagger and kind of mix up a little bit. So I've got 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, but if you look, 4s kind of sneaks in here before 3d. And a lot of this has to do with the repulsions and attractions going on in the atom because I've got electrons attracted to the nucleus that's positive, and then I have negative electrons being repelled by other negative electrons, and we end up with kind of this little mixed up hierarchy. So the first thing you need to know is we have to fill the atom with electrons in energy order, but that said, it also has to be in the order closest to the nucleus moving out. So knowing that, you have to kind of keep in mind that 4s is going to be closer to the nucleus than 3d. And if you look all through here, all of my d orbitals are one energy level lower than what the 6s or the s orbitals are. So let's look. I have 4s, 3d, 5s, 4d, 6s, 5d. So all of these d orbitals their, their orbitals are diagonally shaped, they're multi-lobed, and they're actually larger than our 4s orbitals, which is why they don't quite fill as soon as these do. So they're one energy level lower. And then if we go all the way out to our f sublevel right here, they have seven orbitals each, and these are even larger than the d orbitals, and if you look, they're two energy levels lower. So I have a 6s here, that goes first, closest to the nucleus. Then I have 4f, then 5d, and then 6p. So please keep in mind the staggering that's going on there. Now, to kind of sum up all the staggering and kind of the, the differences in the energy levels, I did include this table. I'm not going to read it to you during uh, the video, but if you want to pause it and look through it, please let me know if you have any questions. The second rule for electron configuration is Pauli exclusion principle. And really this just says that our orbitals are only big enough for two electrons. And that said, they also have to be spinning in opposite directions. So keep in mind, my electrons are negatively charged. And because of that, they have the same charge, they repel each other. And so to try and make them fit in a small space uh, together just doesn't work very well. So two, maximum of two electrons per orbital, but they have to be in opposite spins. In other words, they're moving in different directions. And we signify that with our arrows. So these boxes, this is an orbital diagram, by the way, and this diagram tells us that each box is an orbital. So my 1s orbital, which is a sphere, it's this inner dark circle here. It's actually a sphere. Uh, I have two electrons inside that darker inner sphere, okay? And one's moving up and one's moving down. Now, the up, down, is it is somewhat arbitrary, but just keep in mind, they're moving in opposite directions. The next sublevel would be the 2s, which is the secondary sphere here, and there are two electrons in there. Again, spin up and spin down with the arrows. Then come the p orbitals. So in this 2p sublevel, I have three orbitals, one in the x plane, one in the Y plane, and then one in the Z plane. And in each one of those barbells, so like this is a pair of barbells, that's one orbital. And I can put two electrons in each one of those. All right, for the third rule, we have Hun's rule, or what I like to call electrons don't like roommates. So what that means is this one electron coming in right here, actually let me, let me pull up my uh, periodic table here. 
And let's just look at this real quick here. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we can look. Okay. Um, the electrons, so this is neon, and my neon's right over here at the edge of my, uh, my window here. I don't want to cover it up too much, but neon's right here. Okay. And neon has six electrons in the P sublevel, the second P sublevel. There are three orbitals, right? One in the X, one in the Y, and one in the Z. And each one of them has two electrons. So that means six electrons total in that sublevel. And if we look at the periodic table, this makes sense because I have six columns here. I have boron, carbon, nitrogen, and then I have oxygen, fluorine, neon. So six for a total of six electrons. So here's what I want you to see with Hund's rule. So the first, my boron right here, uh, if we were to look at the orbital diagram, I would see that I have lithium and beryllium right here in my 2s orbital, right? One spin up, one spin down. My next atom is boron. And so it's going to put an, an electron in this 2x or px orbital. One electron is going to go there. The next electron coming in for carbon is not going to pair up with the electron from boron. It's going to find its own apartment, so to speak. It's not going to try and stuff itself in there. They don't like roommates, so this next electron is going to go in that y orbital, then in a spin up. And then nitrogen over here is going to fill the third orbital. So I'm going to have spin up, spin up, spin up, and then the last three electrons coming in for oxygen, fluorine, and neon are going to spin down. In other words, this, this electron for oxygen is the one that will pair up with boron. My fluorine electron that's going to spin down is now going to pair up with carbon. And my neon, this last electron, will actually pair up with the, the electron from nitrogen. So those are the three rules. Now we can display these three rules in two ways. And the first one is an orbital diagram like I just showed you. And this is where we have boxes that are labeled with an energy level, a sublevel, and then we put in arrows to show what electrons exist in each one. So, um, for example, this is carbon. And if we look on the periodic table, carbon's over here, number six, and it has six electrons. Two in the 1s, spin up, spin down. Two in the secondary sphere, right? 2s, spin up, spin down. And then if we look, we have barbells here. We've got a green, a purple, and a red. The first electron that goes for boron is going to go in the x. So we see one in 2px, we see one electron. Carbon has the second electron, and that electron right there is not going to go in this first, uh, this first x orbital, right? It's not going to go back into there because there's already an electron in there that's repelling it. So it's going to find its own orbital before it pairs up, right? So what I put in your example packet and your homework packet is something that looks like this, which is an, uh, an orbital diagram for you. Now, granted, it says electron configuration at the top, but orbital diagram is just one way to display this. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull over, kind of hide this for just a second, and we're going to look real close at this example worksheet here. Let's say for a second that I want to do an orbital diagram for, uh, let's do SE right here. So number 34. So remember that one we are going to put in all the electrons up to and including SE, right? So we know that we have, let me cross this over just a little bit so I can reach my arrows here. Got them kind of off to the side. Okay, uh, I have two electrons in my 1s orbital, the ones that represent hydrogen and helium. Okay, so I'm going to put the first electrons going to spin up. And yes, I know these 
uh, arrows are a little oversized, but I wanted you to see what I was doing here. So I've got one uh, electron in that, and then the second one, that would represent helium, both in that 1s orbital, and I know it's in the 1s because it's in the first row, and hydrogen and helium are both s uh, sublevel atoms. Okay, yes, I know helium's over here. Uh, helium is over here on the periodic table because it's a noble gas, but that electron is not in the p orbital. It's actually in the s, so I'm going to put it over there. So the first energy level is done because there's one sublevel for energy level one. The second energy level, the second row, has two sublevels, an s, because this is my s block, and a p sublevel. So the first one right here, I have my lithium and beryllium, and those are going to be my spin-up electrons. And we're going to put that close to that. I'm trying here. It's not letting me duplicate it. There we go. So let's leave that one there. And then here's my other one, and we're going to put that one there. Try not to mess up what I've got up there already. All right, now we've got my 2s filled. Now here comes the second energy level, p sub level. So right here I've got three orbitals, my x, my y, and my, my z, if you remember. Okay, and the boron electron is first going to spin up in that first orbital. So in that first one right kind of there, right? My boxes are a little off. And then the carbon, the carbon one is not going to share space with this guy. It's going to go into the next box all by itself. And my nitrogen is going to do the exact same thing. It's not going to share space in the X. It's not going to share space in the Y. It's going to share space, or sorry, it's going to have its own Z orbital all to itself. Okay, now here comes the spin down. My oxygen now has no choice but to share space, so it's going to go into that first orbital and share space with the boron electron. Then my fluorine is going to spin down in my y orbital, right there, okay? And then my next one, my neon, just like we discussed earlier, is going to spin down in that third z orbital. All right, moving on. We are now done with the second row. And keep in mind, we're reading this periodic table like a book from left to right and top to bottom. So on the third energy level, I have three sublevels. I have an S, a P, and a D. But if you look, the D is way down here, and it's in the third energy level. This is what I was explaining to you at the beginning of the video. The D sublevel is actually an energy level behind. So if I'm in the third row, I'm not going to see the D sublevel enter into the energy mix until I'm past the 4S sublevel. So when I start to fill these electrons here, I'm going to start with 3S. So I'm going to duplicate these arrows here, and I'm going to pull them down here. And that's going to be my sodium. My magnesium electron is going to come in right here. And then I'm going to do the 3P just like I did here. So I'm going to spin up. And, oops, that one copied the wrong one. Here, I'll copy this one. There we go. We're going to spin up. Spin up. Spin up. Whoa, that one's got a little crazy on me. There we go. And then we're going to spin down. And I get six electrons in my three orbitals in my second, or sorry, my third energy level P sub level. Okay, so we're done with our third row. Now I'm going to enter onto the fourth row of the periodic table. And we're getting closer to our goal here. So I'm going to fill my S orbital in the 4S, if I can get my arrows to cooperate. 
it's so it'd be so much easier if I could just draw these things. Okay, but I'm going to move this guy down here, and I'm going to have the spin down, and we're going to put him down here. And then what I want you to see is after this 4s, now this is not 4d. This is 3d. It's one energy level lower. So instead of filling 4p, because I'm not there yet, 4p is over here from gallium to krypton. I'm not there yet, so I can't go just right here. I have to go back and get the 3D that I skipped. Now I skipped it for good reason because the 4S is closer to the nucleus than the 3D, but now I have to go back and fill it. And keep in mind, it's the same situation. I am going to fill, <laughs> I'm gonna fill my arrows here, my spin up and spin down arrows. Okay, the spin up and my D sub level first second one until I get all five. So keep in mind our, uh, our D sub level has five orbitals and hopefully you see this pattern. My S has one orbital with two electrons. My P sub level has three orbitals, two electrons each. And then my D has five. So one, three, five. Hopefully you can guess then what the F must have. And the F has seven and when we look down at the F block, this makes sense because I see 14 columns down here, seven orbitals, <clears throat> excuse me, two electrons each. So I'm still filling my D sub level because now we're going to actually spin down on these one at a time. And I'm almost done here. I've got three now, I've got four. and five, we're almost to our goal because our goal was SE. So we're gonna include all the electrons up to and including SE. So now I'm done with my 3D orbital. My P orbital is back up to the fourth energy level because only the D is one energy level lower. And now I can fill in my one electron up in the X, my one electron up in the Y, my one electron up in the Z, and then that selenium, that SE electron, is the only one that's going to double up and the rest are single. So I have two unpaired electrons in that orbital and one set paired. All right, so that's orbital diagram. Um, there is another way of doing this, and um, some might argue that it's it's considerably easier. and uh, it doesn't, it is easier, I guess, in some way, uh, but it's not necessarily, um, it doesn't give you as much detail. Okay, but uh, we will go through a couple of these and see if this makes sense. So that was orbital diagram. And our next one is just an electron configuration notation. So this lists a principal energy level, the sub level, and then a superscript that tells us how many electrons are in that orbital. And then we have a shortcut, the, no, the noble gas notation. All right, so I'm gonna bring back up my periodic table here, and we're gonna do an electron configuration notation for SE, the same one that we did, okay? So remember what I was saying, that we're going to do energy level, sublevel, and then a superscript that tells us how many electrons. So my first energy level has a sublevel S, and in that sublevel I have two electrons, and that would be hydrogen and helium. My second energy level also has an S with two electrons, and that would be lithium and beryllium. Moving over, same thing I was doing before, moving on the second energy level, I have second energy level, P sublevel, and I have six electrons. Now, so the detail here is I know there's six electrons in the sublevel, but it doesn't really tell me that, hey, by the way, Hun's rule took place and we had three spin ups and then three spin down. Um, next up, second energy level's done. My third energy level that has three sublevels, it has an S with two electrons, sodium and magnesium. And then I have energy level three, 
P sublevel, and I have six of them in there. And then my 4S, remember we're done with our third energy level here. Now I'm going to start my 4S. 4S, because it's closer to the nucleus than the D sublevel. So then I'm going to go back, pick up my 3D, 3D, and this has five orbitals, two electrons each for a total of 10. All right, almost done because selenium is next. Now I'm back up into my fourth energy level, P sublevel, and selenium is the first, second, third, fourth electron in. Now the last part of this is my shortcut because that is the electron configuration notation for selenium. So selenium equals this. Now what if I wanted to do a shortcut? Selenium here is number 34, but if I wanted to uh, not write everything up to and including all of these electrons, I could cut it off right here because those, all of those electrons equal argon. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. So instead of writing all of that, what I could do is a bracket, neon, bracket. Oops, I did that in a superscript. There we go. Neon, 4s2, 3d10, and 4p4. So I just kind of cut this down a little bit by using, uh, did I use neon? My bad, sorry, this should have been argon. Argon was the most recent noble gas. So we put argon because all of this equals argon, okay? I hope you have found this helpful. Um, please, as always, if you need any help uh, figuring this stuff out, please let me know and I'm happy to help, okay? Take care, hope you found this helpful.